Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. <gasps> you get fairy dust, I get fairy dust. Little Emily gets fairy dust. And I'm so fucking excited to talk about this. It's time for another episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Oh, God. Okay, so now we're on season two, episode one. And, okay, this is the first... Well, we already had inclinations in the first season that Scott was questionable. His behavior was questionable. Um, red flags. Okay, so this one is they actually... So Kim is an expert at hacking phones, and Scott left his phone with Courtney. It was an old phone, and Kim was like, what? Let me look at it. And so they get into it and she was resistant. Courtney was resistant. And then, um, and then Kim finds some stuff, uh, like a girl labeled model in there. And then that is easily brushed off with, oh, is she in Miami? That's just business. Okay, fine. And then they get to some other shenanigans going on in the phone and I will let you uh, watch this clip. He has a text cool. message from somebody called my wife. What? What? And it says, I loved looking into your eyes last <gasps> night. And then she said, yes, it was great seeing you. Then he wrote to his loser friend. I wish I could come to LA for a week and not tell court, but the second we go out, she'll know I'm in town. Let's talk. Okay. What is always interesting to me is when people don't have evidence of cheating. So they feel like they need evidence for like, I see this in his cell phone, but and it's an assumption that he's cheating, which is usually the correct assumption. Your first hunch is usually correct. I mean, follow your inner guidance, but, um, okay. So there's this need or this desire or this compulsion or whatever. It's like, I need to find out if this person is cheating. I found this kind of evidence, a sketchy behavior, and now I need to confront the person and find out if they were actually indeed cheating on me. Okay, so um, what I think is interesting is that, and we know from just history that she eventually talks to him, which we'll, we'll get to that later, but, uh, and then she's fine, right? Um, but to me, I actually don't need evidence because it's already, uh, excuse me, excuse, it's already this by seeing that shit in the phone. Like, bitch, I, that's all the red flag I need. Like, you've already told me everything I need to fucking know about you in those two texts. So one of the texts was, um, it was great looking into your eyes. And then later he says, which we'll get to, like, uh, that's just me and my friend just joking around. Bitch, that's not normal. Like, people don't do that. We don't joke around with that kind of stuff. Um, and here's a clue. So he texted, um, oh, it was great looking into your eyes like last night. Um, and then she responds, yeah, that was really nice seeing you. Okay, so... If it's funny, she would be laughing. If it was, oh, LOL, remember we joked about that? Ah, that's so funny. But like, we don't, that's not a joke. Like nobody has in the history of time told another woman or another man that, <laughs> I love looking in your eyes. Like that's just not a thing. That doesn't exist in the universe. <laughs> it just doesn't compute, right? Um, now, it doesn't mean that they, he had sex with her. But I don't need to know. What I need in a relationship is not is not weirdness and oddness. Now, if it seems fucked up and it seems suspicious, but if you tell me like, oh, that was just a joke and that was just like, 
ha ha ha, like that's nothing. See, she just said she was happy to see me too. Like we're just fucking friends. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to date somebody that talks to their friends that way. Like I'm good, like you're good. Like do that, go do that. And then the other one was <laughs> to the friend, you know, like I can't go because the minute I know Courtney will find out I'm in town again. Okay, fine. You weren't up to any shenanigans, but I'm not in a, interested in a relationship in which someone's worried about mommy finding out where the fuck I am. I mean, I'm not interested in a parent because if I find out from a text that that is how you feel about me, Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, sweetheart, you don't have to worry about that at all. That is actually not a problem. You can go to any town in the world without me knowing from this point forward because I'm not interested. I'm not interested in subterfuge. I'm not interested in latent desires for my partner not to know I'm in fucking town. Like, what's that? So I always find it interesting, as I've said, like... I need evidence of the cheating. I, I don't like, I don't, I don't need evidence of cheating because cheating isn't my deal breaker. Cheating is a deal breaker, but it's not my only one. You know what is a deal breaker for me? Fishy fucking texts with people, friends, whatever, like any indication of just some weird shit, dysfunctional shenanigans, drama, shit, shit, shit in my, in a phone. Like I, that's, that is, oh, that is all I need. Like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling me who you are because we don't have to continue this. Like, this is so great. I'm so glad I found about, found out about this. Um, you may be wondering like, why am I not pissed at, um, somebody digging in someone else's phone? And I, you know, I bowed down to Dan Savage. He taught me everything, not everything, but most everything I know about being a sex positive bitch. And, um, I go with his rule on this, which is if you are snooping and you find something, then the snooping is forgiven. <laughs> right or wrong, you may completely disagree. And I absolutely encourage you to do so, you know, but that's going to be my rule. That's the one I'm going to live by. You know, we all need little mottos and little rules to live by. That's my rule is that, um, if I snoop, I, I'm not a snooper, sn snooper, but if there was some red flags, I might have to take a look at something. I might have to like take a peek. Um, but if I find something, then I don't get to be in trouble for snooping. You don't get to yell at me for snooping if I found some shit. If I found your, you know, uh, hidden Tinder account or whatever, or if I found your like love notes in a Instagram DM, or if I, if I find it, like I'm, you, I don't get to get in trouble for that. Like my, your bad is 10 times worse than mine. You know, again, it would be great if we never snoop. That would be a wonderful thing. Like, that would be cool. Great. Let's never all do that. But sometimes it happens because some weird shit goes down and we kind of like want to, you know. And also, if we're being gaslighted, which that happens later in this episode because he's going to tell her some fucked up shit about these texts. Um, you know, like I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take a peek. I'm gonna take a peek. So again, right or wrong, and I'm not. Remember, like I'm. Th this isn't like me, Elizabeth. I'm the therapist. This is just shit how I live. <laughs> like how I fucking figured out how to live with you know a, a brain full of CPTSD, addiction, and um, codependency, fond responses. So um, anyway, okay, okay, okay. So um, now watch this next really quick. I just would never let someone treat me like that. Okay, for one, we know that's not true. We know that's not true. With the history, maybe at that point in her life, that was her boundary with herself, that she wouldn't allow herself to be treated like that, aka cheated on, <laughs> or potentially cheated on. Again, we're just reacting to weird shit, weird, odd text messages in a phone. But... Um, but the reason I wanted to play that is not to like, you know, rub salt in any of her wounds. Of course not. But it, it's real easy to tell other people. It's really easy. You shouldn't be treated like that. Like you shouldn't put up with that. And 
the pickle is, is we have to let people choose what, what they're going to do with whatever issue that comes up for them. Like we have to like acquiesce that to another person. Um, I like in these instances to use I statements. Like I don't like that he's treating you like that, but me telling you like you shouldn't let him treat you like that is me parenting you like you shouldn't. No, no, no. You know, like, let me tell you this um, for what you should do. And as we can see, you know, we know the history um, that she gets cheated on in her marriage and her relationship with um, the man who she's in relationship now. It's in the past. Again, no judgment about any of that. Just to point out, it's so easy to tell other people the thing that we wish we could adhere to in our life. Okay, watch this next clip. I feel like if we left it up to Courtney, Courtney would sit in her room all weekend contemplating and thinking about Scott. So Kim and I come up with the best idea to take Courtney to Mi Cabo in Cabo San Lucas. No Scott allowed. This is what we like to call a geographical cure. <laughs> so she says like, hey, like, if it was up to Courtney, she would just be moping in her room thinking about Scott. Actually, that might be a great idea. Like if you are contemplating this drama and this upset and this pain, it actually might be a good idea to sit with it to try to figure out what the next step is. But so a geographical cure <laughs> is when you decide to go somewhere. Um, it's mostly used like when you want to move, you, you know, you, I hate the city, let me move, or, you know, this didn't work out, let me move, I hate this job, let me move, and then it'll be so much better in the new place. Well, as we know, where you go, wherever you go, there you are, bitch. <laughs> I don't get to leave my CPTSD and my trauma responses in another city or state. I, they come with me, unfortunately. And whatever fuck, fucked up shit, whatever fuckery, um, uh, played it out in that last city, guess where else it's going to be played out in the new one too, eventually. Um, so, but anyway, so the geographical cure is let's, and, and, and also it's like a little co codependency again, it, you know, if, if you're going away to support, like remember in sex in the city to, I think it was where, um, fuck face, uh, doesn't come to the wedding and they all take her to, to Mexico to help her grieve. They're not trying to make her stop grieving. They're supporting her as she grieves. I don't consider that a ge geographical cure. That is, you know, this thing was planned. Let's go, let's us do this together and let us sit with you as you experience this pain versus look at the shiny object. Don't think about this shit. Don't think about it. Cause here's the thing. We actually do need to think about it. We need to come to terms. We need to kind of live with the consequences of our choices and the consequences of the people who we've chose to be in relationship with. And so it's probably a really good idea not to mope, but to maybe spend a little time, again, remember, this is a show, so they've got to do dramatic shit. So who knows if this would have really happened in, in real life. But um, it's just good to know, you know, as we learn about how this shit kind of plays out in a family, this would be what would be called a geographical cure. And as we know, uh, if you watch the episode, it doesn't fucking work <laughs> because... And they get actually mad at her because she keeps thinking about Scott. Wherever you go, there you are. Guess you don't get to leave your California, uh, Calabasas, and go to whatever Cabo or whatever the fuck it is. You don't get to go do that because your brain goes with you. And if you have Scott on the brain in California, you're going to have Scott on the brain in Mexico. So you don't get to just, we're humans. We have a psyche that goes with us. And so, you know, and, and it's always kind of funny. It's like, we're trying to cheer you up. We're trying to cheer you up. Um, and how dare you not be cheered up? And so it's the guise of helping, like this is part of the codependency, like it, um, Cartman's, if you look at my codependency videos um, from Codependent No More, there's Cartman's Triangle, Cartman's Triangle. And so we have on the, this top of the triangle is the rescuer, 
and the persecutor, right? And then here's the victim. So in this case, Courtney's the victim. She's the one that's having a hard time. So let's fix this for her. Let's rescue her and take her to Mexico so she won't hurt anymore. So they do this and because it's a fucking triangle, it's never gonna work and it's not gonna go well. So what the codependent rescuer does is when they don't get their satisfaction, their hit of winning, accomplishing their goal of you're going to feel better. So let me take you here so you'll feel better. You're the victim. I'm the rescuer. When you don't respond the way that I want you to respond, when you're not like, oh, thank God this cures everything. Thank God for Mexico. I'm not worried about this anymore. This is great. Instead of she's having a really hard time functioning, she's shutting down and they're mad at her for leaving. She doesn't, she actually wants to go and relax and they fuss at her for that. And then she like leaves the club early or whatever and she gets in trouble for that. So then they go into the persecutor. So if the rescuer doesn't get what they want, you have to be happy then they turn into the persecutor. How dare you? We took you here to take your mind off of it. Why are you thinking about him? And so drama, just drama, 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 drama. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. We'll continue with this episode next time. Um, I hope you found that helpful.